All right, picking up where uh, I left off last time, I'm still reading uh, the James H. Smith's uh, Hub Federation stuff. I had just finished uh, the Telsey Amberden um, book, but in between uh, the first and second of those books, I read Barry B. Longyear's uh, Manifest Destiny, which is a collection of, I think, four short stories uh, with a framing device to kind of connect them together that I didn't really care for. Uh, this copy is uh, from 1980, and I think it is a first printing by the looks of it. Uh, and the cover art, which I thought was kind of cool, is from uh, John Rush, who I have not heard of. I might have to Google him and look up some more stuff. Um, I picked this up because... Uh, Ira at SF Words of Wonder had been reading other very long year stuff, um, but I didn't have that stuff, but I did recently get this, so I checked this out. Um, so it's four stories. The first called, uh, where is it here, The Yarn, um, which was kind of like um, a story of Native Americans losing their land, transposed into a science fiction setting. Uh, these aliens that were attacked by humanity and fought a war but lost it and kind of just their resignation of acceptance that they are uh, going to go extinct now uh, by choice kind of thing as there's nothing else they can do to to reclaim their planets kind of thing. And it was good. Um, I liked it but it was the second story uh, his well, did it win a Hugo and a Nebula, I think? Um, Enemy Mine, which there was a movie made. Um, I may have seen that as a kid, but I have been meaning to watch that. Um, so I haven't seen that yet, but Enemy Mine was a great uh, novella. Again, humanity and an alien species are at war. And um, there's like a shootout above a planet and the human and one alien fighter both crash land on this mostly ocean planet um, and they try to kill each other on a beach and then decide uh, they're gonna have to cooperate to survive and uh, it turns out the alien species uh, are hermaphrodites and the alien ends up being um, pregnant and over the coming months as they kind of build a shelter in a cave they become very close I forget the alien's name but the human just starts referring to him uh, as Jerry which is kind of the first part of the alien's name it's hard for him to pronounce, so he just calls him Jerry. Um, they learn each other's languages. They become very close friends. Um, and I guess I don't really want to spoil it. It really pulls uh, at your heartstrings. I read a couple of reviews that were negative, saying it was a good story aside from the sentimentality. But um, that's what hooked me, was the relationship between these two. Started out as enemies, um, became best friends, uh, and then um, just the loss and heartbreak, uh, the relationship, it was really good. Um, I'll probably watch the movie and as always be pissed off that it wasn't, you know, exactly like the book and nowhere near as good. But I'm sure I'll I'll watch it because um, um, reviews for that were not too bad on online, even from some people who had read the book. So uh, what was the other story? Oh, there was another story. The third story was about a, a corporation who's mining a planet that has this species that's um, somewhat intelligent, but since they don't really have an organized civilization, um, the, the uh, human corporation um, really has no restrictions to mining the planet kind of thing. It's just these creatures are kind of in the way. Um, they bring in some historians and some scientists and stuff to kind of teach these creatures to kind of uplift their their intelligence and consciousness. At first it kind of seems like maybe so that we can teach them to um, cooperate and kind of get out of the way uh, and get along with this corporation's mining and whatnot. Um, I'm pretty sure it was mining. Uh, anyway, uh, some of these scientists uh, come to realize that actually the teaching they're doing is inadvertently going to lead to this species becoming extinct. And I won't, I'm not gonna say how, 
But um, they bring this to the corporation's attention uh, and the corporation's like, yeah, that's why you're here. Uh, we need to get rid of these creatures. And the scientists and historians kind of um, take it upon themselves to uh, change this outcome and save this species kind of thing. It was good too. Not as good as Enemy Mine. Probably better than the first story. The fourth story, what the hell was it called? Uh, USE Force. It was really, really bad military SF. I did not finish it. I started skimming and then I just gave up. Um, it was just really bad. I had no, no interest whatsoever, but definitely interested in reading more um, Barry B. Longyear. Uh, and that leads us to my newest obsession, which is James H. Smith's uh, Hub and Federation universe. I was going to go into a decent amount of detail about this, but I'm liking this future history so much that I think I might dedicate a video to it. I've been taking notes as I've been reading, because I'm, I'm going to read the entire collected works anyway. Um, so I've been taking notes, and I'm pretty sure I'll do some sort of short video just highlighting it, but I'm really enjoying this stuff. Um, so I read the first book, which is Telsey Amberdin. Then after doing a re little research, I realized it makes the most sense to read the third volume second. Um, Telsey and Trigger are uh, Smith's best known characters and all their stories are collected here. Uh, the problem is the first book is all Telsey's early stories. Uh, the second book is Telsey and Trigger's later stories and the third book is Trigger's early stories. So of course I went ahead and read Trigger's early stories after Telsey's early stories. Uh, and I'm just about finished with uh, the second book now, which is kind of their combined stories, which are their later adventures. So chronologically, it just made sense uh, to read this second. And I'm glad I did because um, at least one of the stories in here directly follows uh, the novel that is in this. So um, featuring Trigger, like I would have missed out on all the backstory of Trigger uh, and what she's all about. So. Definitely, if you want to read all of these, I would read volume three, second. So Trigger and Friends um, is, I think it was all Trigger stories. Uh, there might have been one that wasn't Trigger related. But um, Trigger, unlike Telzi, is not a, a telepath or anything. She just works for um, this kind of, uh, the organization is called pre-colonization. They kind of check out planets that are being considered for colonization. They land, they do all these tests and um, basically get it ready for colonization, make sure it's safe. So we get her origin story. She's working for um, a commissioner, senior assistant commissioner, Halati Tate, who is another uh, character that features in a lot of stories, mostly. Um, so I had notes on my second cell phone, which I use specifically for notes now, and it's dead. So that didn't work out. <laughs> uh, I'll have to fix that in time for my next video. But uh, Halati Tate features in a bunch of her stories. Um, he's basically her boss. And in the very first story, um, they make this huge discovery that kind of changes um, the history of the human galaxy, kind of. Not that it's that grand. It's not, I mean, it's certainly implied, but it, it doesn't read like that. But certainly, um, humanity is going to be changed by this discovery, which is basically a discovery of the old Galactic's um, technology. They have found stuff by um, kind of the forerunner species of the galaxy. They've been gone for 30,000 years. There's not much known about them. So Trigger... Since she works for him, she's kind of his assistant. She ends up being um, on the sidelines for a major um, discovery in human history. Uh, yeah, that was the first story called Harvest Time. All of these, by the way, were written in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, and there's a couple other stories that see her kind of rise uh, in position and importance. Uh, but I think maybe I'll just leave that for the video I'm most likely going to do about this. Um, another character is uh, Quillen, who um, is technically, well, his cover is that he works for the 
the Space Guild engineers or something, which is, you know, they, they work on ships, they make things, the, they make space stations and stuff for different planets, but he's actually um, part of the Space, space Scout Intelligence Agency, which is, it feels like an Ian M. Banks special circumstances, basically. He's actually an undercover agent in um, half the stories he's in. And he becomes a, a love interest for Trigger. But um, his stories are fun because he's basically a James Bond type guy. What I've come to find is uh, James H. Smith's Hub and Federation universe is kind of a mix of Neil Asher's um, polity and special circumstances and from um, Ian M. Banks. Like the government definitely feels like the polity government, which is run by AIs, like they are all knowing, they let certain things happen um, because it meets uh, certain criteria or it's an ends to a means to an end kind of thing. You can't really see why they're letting things happen and until the end of the story kind of thing. They're pretty much all aware. Um, they got these different government agencies. Uh, the one that really seems like um, special circumstances is the psychology service, which uh, is the people with psi abilities, they're telepaths. They basically stop any um, any threat to uh, humanity that involves like psi powers. Um, any rogue person with psi powers who is using them for evil, basically, um, they put a stop to that. But they're really behind the scenes. Um, and I, I think I mentioned in the previous video, like Telzi is contacted by them because she has great powers, but she's not interested in working for them sort of thing, but she inadvertently does. She kind of becomes like a contract agent for them. They occasionally get in touch with her and she works, works for them kind of thing. So it's really cool. And eventually, um, she meets up with Trigger or sorry. Yeah, she, yes, yeah, she does. She meets up with Trigger in this book, but, um, near the end of this collection of Trigger stories is... Uh, James H. Smith's novel, uh, Legacy, which was a retitle of, um, its original title was A Tale of Two Clocks, and it follows on from the first story where that major discovery um, of this technology left behind by the old Galactics, um, it's kind of the the fallout of the, that major discovery that Trigger was inadvertently involved in. And it turns out she was much more involved than originally um, originally thought. She kind of holds a key. The whole book read like, um, it read like the Maltese Falcon with the characters being, uh, Ian M. Banks, special circumstances characters. Um, everybody's after this object, uh, which is kind of, the old galactic tech is basically a mix of mechanical and biological uh, technology. It's like half alive. It can create other technology, um, endless energy kind of thing. But the key, the key to this technology is missing and everyone's after it kind of thing. Uh, and it was really good. I enjoyed it more than Demon Breed. It was confusing and convoluted at times. You got a lot of characters with different motivations and then those motivations are changing. Sometimes identities are changing. People aren't who you thought they were. Um, I'm super annoyed that this phone died because I had I had some good notes on here I was going to refer to, but that's all right. I'm probably going to make a video about uh, this stuff anyway. Um, so now I'm on to the second volume, which I'm reading third, the uh, Talzy and Trigger stuff together. Uh, and they are not bad. The first two stories are just Talzy stories. Uh, she's getting a little older. She's only... 17 but um in this book it, it's kind of confirmed what i thought which is her personal life is not really that of a teenager she is um so far beyond mentally um she's basically an adult with superpowers in a kid's body kind of thing uh and again she's occasionally contacted by the psychology service uh when there is some sort of issue that they either don't have time for because they're off all over the galaxy, um, you know, looking into other potential threats, or they've tried and failed and they need someone of her ability. And she constantly refuses to actually join the organization, but she will work for them. Um, so that's cool. There's still development of her powers. She's, 
she's constantly um, learning new abilities and getting more and more powerful. Um, I am just over halfway through this. I'll finish it today or tomorrow. And then um, most likely I will go on to the, the final stories, which don't involve either of those two characters. But they do have a return of uh, Niall Edland, the main character from Demon Breed, which is in here, so I'm not going to have to read the entire book. Um, and her otters. They feature in one more short story. So yeah, I am absolutely loving this universe. Um, and probably I will do a video on it. Um, I think I'll read this next. And then um, I did a video over at... Um, Richard's channel, Vintage SF, with him and Ira at SF Words of Wonder, talking about the best of Hal Clement. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, next, we are going to do a video on uh, the best of Lee Brackett. Uh, but that'll be near the end of the month, so I don't plan on reading this uh, quite yet. And since I read it just last year, I'm just going to read a few of my favorites from it. Um, and I believe that video, uh, near the end of March... Uh, will be on this channel. So um, look forward to that as well, and uh, we will see you in the next one.